okay so this is uh, well this is lecture 28 okay so looks like i figured out how to do how to get the l first time around okay so i think you have to select journal first and then do okay good all right so let's uh, let's remind ourselves what we were seeing last time we were looking at uh, soft message passing decoding right okay so this was uh, with respect to bpsk over awgn okay so the main uh, idea was the message or the number that is passed from bit node to a check node is going to be llr of that bit node at every iteration the best the best estimate of the llr of that bit node the message that comes from the check node back to the bit node is again some llr for that particular bit node and once one makes the independence assumption that at any given iteration all these llrs are calculated with respect to completely independent mutually disjoint received values so you can deal with it like in the the, the way i way i wrote down so you get two two simple update equations one for the bit node and one for the check node so let me re, let me write down how those update equations were so the bit to check uh, uh, messages were something like this okay so for the first iteration what do you do okay iteration 1 you simply send yi i think yi was my notation for the received values okay so received values are y1 through yn these are received llrs right okay received llrs okay so r r1 through rn is my received values yi will be 2 by sigma square times ri right so that's how we find the received llrs and in iteration 1 you simply send Okay, so I'm not going to write down the update equation for iteration one. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, but it's just that the notation will be different, and I have to go through and uh, do the same thing. So in iteration one, step A, what do you do? Send yi, Send yi right? So bit i sends yi on all the edges. Okay, and uh, step B, the check node will process the yi's, right? So there's some small difference there. But from iteration two onwards, we had a comfortable common notation. in fact you can extend that to iteration 1 also it's not a big deal but uh, uh, let's just write it for for these iterations what would be the what was the notation i said uh, u uh, where did i put l did i put l on top right ul uh, denotes a bit to check message bit to check uh, message and i had vl denoting the check to bit message right and uh, well uh, to do it properly i should i should uh, index all the edges and then i should subscript u with that edge number right that will give you the proper way of doing it but then i'll have to figure out the edges that are connected to bits It's just you can do it properly consistently with notation but just the notation gets more and more messy you have to have uh, those kind of things so i bypassed all that by just concentrating on one bit node and telling you what the law it obeyed uh, just by indexing those edges in, from 1 to uh, i okay so if you look at a bit node of degree i okay say maybe yi was what it received from the no 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 what did it, what degree did i take remember i must have had some reasonable notation for this d okay okay i took degree d and the ith bit it's got degree d and then i said it would have received v1 or maybe v2 right v2 l minus 1 through did i say this v d l minus 1 in the previous iteration okay from the check bit check notes okay so and it is going to send u1 
l to its first neighbor okay so so this is the comfortable notation i used with respect to one bit node okay so what was the relationship now u1 l equals yi plus v2 l minus 1 plus so on till vd l minus okay so likewise one can do u2 l which would be yi plus v1 l minus 1 then you would jump to v3 okay so you don't use v2 you don't use that information that came from that this was the bit to check message in iteration l okay for for the check to bit message it's a little bit more complicated just that the so operations are not too complicated but it involves one non linear function it gets a little bit more messy okay so how does that work if you look at uh, check node j j check node let's say degree e okay and again we'll do a similar notation just for simplicity i'll say i'm interested in the message it sends out in iteration l and it would have received u2l through ue l in the lth iteration okay so in the step a of the lth iteration then what do you do for v1l you have to do two things okay the sign of v1l is computed in one way and the magnitude of v1l is computed in one way okay so the magnitude of v1l what do you do for that you use this formula which is f of what summation okay so let me just let me not write sigma so just kind of Uh, mix messes up things f of u2 l plus f of u3 l plus so on till f of u e l am i right is this consistent with the way f of defined okay what was f of x now log tan hyperbolic mod x by 2 right and remember for f of x I'm I'm going to only take absolute value. Okay, that's understood. I'm not writing it down. Maybe there's an absolute value outside, just to stress that it's only the magnitude I'm interested in. Okay, it's fine. And what about the sign? Is the sign of u to l product of the signs of the individual uh, messages? Okay. that fine okay so these are the two updates and uh, so the sign you can also think of it as uh, you can also evolve it with bits if you want okay zero representing plus 1 and 1 representing minus 1 you can take xors and do that that's also fine all right so hopefully this is uh, this is quite clear The, there was a questioning there was a question that was asked to me about conditioning and all that so for instance when i derived those formulas i never said anything about conditioning right i simply simply said probabilities of individual bits and then in the actual usage we seem to be conditioning but uh, those things work out okay. okay so you can work it out carefully and see that it works out okay and those conditionings are not a not a big deal okay go back and think about the way we wrote it down okay all right so that's the that's the update equation and what we are going to do now in this in this beginning okay hopefully i think we'll finish it in this class is to do density evolution for this iterative process okay under the iid assumption again to do it rigorously i have to go to the tree ensemble and then start from the leaf nodes and then come up uh, all the way up that's the proper way of doing it that would be nice and rigorous and proper but we will do the hand waving iid assumption and simply do the computation very quickly and you can always go back to the tree ensemble and we'll get the same expression okay so so i'll 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 do it for i'm sorry i'll 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 give it after class come and ask okay so the so one more thing to worry about is regular and irregular right for regular we had uh, we have the same neighborhoods for irregular we have different neighborhoods and you have to average over all of them all of those things still carry over i'm doing density evolution the only thing that has changed is the messages have now become real numbers as opposed to just being bits in the previous case but all those other assumptions that are necessary to make density evolution possible will still hold for instance i'll have to show that the all zero code word is good enough okay so the all zero code word assumption and the tree assumption and the neighborhood uh, being a tree all those things 
will have to hold good only then this this really makes sense okay so all those things carry over into this also and they, they are all true they have nothing to do with uh, the messages being LL, uh, being real numbers for instance okay so so i'm going to look at the update equation for one node okay and fix the degree then figure out how to track the density through that update equation and then we'll do the averaging over uh, a particular edge okay so I'll, I'll do the same thing like we did before you remember for irregular how did we do it we fixed an edge and we said what's the probability that the edge connects to a degree d bit node on the left okay that was what it was lambda d okay so then but but then you do the update only for fixing the degree to be d given that the degree is d and then you average over the whole probability to get your average uh, behavior over all codes in the ensemble okay so we'll do the same thing here so i can conveniently start with the a fixed degree of particular say a degree d bit node and see how the how, how to track the density okay so one slightly different thing here is now instead of tracking just one probability i have to track the entire pdf okay so that will be different okay so i need notation for now random variables okay so so far we have only dealt with bits and uh, messages are bits what was received is bits everything is bits so i can get around with without worrying about random variables and define making the distinction between a random variable and the value it takes okay so, so far i never had to do that but now since the error the event i'm interested in is uh, bit error but the underlying random variables are actually continuous random variables i'll, I'll have to make that distinction okay so i'll begin by doing that i'll say capital yi is a random variable that denotes yi okay okay so yi is what the llr of the ith bit received from the channel okay so that's my small yi it's actually a rand it, it's it's a random value right if, if you if you do different transmissions you'll get different yi you won't get the same yi and it will follow a distribution that distribution is that random variable is denoted capital Y. Okay, so what will be the distribution of Ys? For instance, if you have to worry about this guy, what will it be? What will be the PDF? Two well, I have to say two Gaussians, but I'm going to make my all zero code word assumption. Okay, remember that. Okay, so I didn't explicitly say this, but I'll assume all zero code word. Okay. So all the assumptions of the previous density evolution hold. There's nothing that changes from there. So I, once I assume all zero code word, what is the message that I'm sending? Plus one. Okay. So it's only one Gaussian. The PDF of RA is what? The received value RA is normal with mean one and variance sigma square. Okay. How do I get YI now? I multiply by two by sigma square. Okay. So what will be the distribution of YI now? Normal with mean what? 2 by sigma square variance 4 by sigma square do you agree okay right when I scale a normal a random variable the mean will scale the variance will scale by the square okay so you do 2 by sigma square whole square multiplied by sigma square again and you'll get 4 by sigma square okay so that's what is the PDF for YI. Okay, so this is the easiest part. Okay, this is a very nice and well-behaved PDF. If you plot it, how will it look? Nice uh, bell-shaped Gaussian. Depending on sigma, the width will be different and all that. Okay, so it's a very nice uh, thing. Okay, no problem. So why why we know very well? Okay, so now I'll say at a particular iteration L, I know the PDF of a random message <coughs> of a message on a random edge averaged over averaged over the entire ensemble of uh, graphs i'll say i know that okay once i know that i'll try to find what the pdf of the message in the next iteration once i have a formula for that i can keep doing it over and over again okay so for that again let's use some notation let's say ul is a random variable that denotes ul okay so I have not put a subscript here. Why? Because I have averaged over all the codes in the ensemble. Okay. So every every message is supposed to follow this PDF. Okay. And I know it's it's good enough. It's it will closely concentrate around the average. So I know every PDF will be very close to this. It's not a problem. Okay. 
for u1 i know what this pdf is for the iteration 1 what is this pdf same as that normal pdf okay that i know okay i have to find for u2 okay so i'll first begin by trying to find the pdf for v1 okay i have to first try to find v1 right so i have to find the find the pdf for capital v1 which is a random variable that denotes vl okay so again i've averaged over all the graphs okay so how do i do this i have to use my check node update equation so what is happening to the random variables now if we have to write vl how is it done the magnitude of vl goes as f of f of k in a degree e check node okay for a degree e check node the magnitude of vl is going to be i'll say u1 l plus f of u2 l so on till f of what u e minus 1 right there are this is what happens to the magnitude okay and what happens to the sign is that a question what happens to the sign So what are these u1s, u2s now? Yeah, they are all IID distributed according to what? The same UL. Okay, they are all independent and identically distributed and they follow the same PDF of UL. Okay, so that's my assumption it's based on the so many other things that I saw on the graph. Okay, so once I do that, I can do this. Okay, so now it's possible to find, okay, without too much worries. You, you can easily, well not easily, at least theoretically you know how to find the PDF of the left hand side now. How do you find the PDF for magnitude of VL? Okay, so you know the PDF for U and L and let it go through this transformation by F. Okay, and you know it's a monotonic nice transformation. So you can apply one of your standard Jacobian formulas, you'll get the PDF for F of U and L. Then how do you do the summation? You convolve all those PDFs and then you run it through F again. So you'll have to do all of those. Okay, and you have to do it numerically. It's tough to have, get an analytical formula for that. Okay, so you do all that, you get the PDF for the magnitude of VL. How do you get the PMF for the sine of VL? It's only a PMF, right? Okay, so you have to find the PMF for sine of U and L. What is the PMF for that? How do you find the probability here for the sine of U and L? You know the PDF for U and L, right? How do you find the probability that's less than zero or greater than zero? How do you find a probability that the random variable is less than 0? Integrate from minus infinity to 0 that PDF, right? So you do that, you will get the individual probabilities and they are all independent. So you can use the 1 minus 1 minus type formula, right? So it is easy to find that. So suppose I know, suppose P is probability that UL is less than 0, right? I can easily find probability that sin of VL will be 1. Okay, what will that be? 1 minus 1 minus 2p raised to the power e minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so it's easy. This is the same as the BSC here. There's no big difference. Okay, so this part is only discrete. Okay, it can be easily computed. Okay, but for the top part above, you need to do some numerical uh, numerical numerical methods have to be used. Okay, but even then the method simply involves transformation of random variables and convolution. Convolution one can efficiently implement as FFT if you want. So there are a lot of simplifications possible, but one can do that. Okay, so I'm not going to write down the whole thing. One can possibly write it in notation. For instance, the way this is written is, after doing all of this, you can find the PDF of VL. Okay, in can be obtained by what? You do this transformation okay what is this capital F okay not it's not CDF I'm sorry <laughs> yeah so transformation of random variables 
transformation of the PDF when the random variable goes through F. Okay. By by f of x. What is f of x? This is a log tan hyperbolic. So when random variable goes through that, your PDF will go through a transformation. That transformation, I mean, I'm denoting it as capital F. Okay. Once I do that, what should I do? I should convolve this capital F of capital F of this with itself how many times? E minus one times. Okay. So I'll denote that as a convolution as E minus one. Okay. So all of them are the same because I have assumed u1 to u e minus 1 are iid according to the distribution of u. Okay, so that is my that is guaranteed by my three assumption and all that. Okay, so it's all independent. I have averaged over all the realizations, so it becomes independent and identically distributed. Okay, so I can denote it by this, and after the convolution, what should I do? Again, I do an f. Okay. So at this point, you should ask me one part of it is discrete, one part of it is continuous. How can you talk about the whole thing in one go, right? So it's theoretically possible if you read probability the right way. It's possible to do all these things with the CDF itself, right? You don't have to come to the PDF. I wrote down the PDF, but I can do the whole thing with the CDF. And if I do it with the CDF, it doesn't matter if partially it's discrete or continuous or the whole thing. Everything will work out properly. Okay? So imagine that this capital F is actually going through the CDF and maybe coming back. Okay? Some such some such thing is happening okay okay so if at all you happen to read very advanced probability theory you'll see that it's also possible to do such things with pdf itself okay but it involves some strange notions which which are probably not necessary but if you read the book for instance modern coding theory you'll see they use some strange notation for those kind of pdfs it's okay we don't have to worry about it think of think of this capital f as a transformation of cdfs you do the transformation of cdf and then maybe you do some operation to it to come back to the PDF, right? But but the update happens in two ways. You deal with the sign differently and the magnitude differently. Okay, so that's the that's the thing. Okay, so I don't want to go into the details and show you how this works. I I'll illustrate. I've, I've implemented this in MATLAB, so I'll maybe illustrate this and show you how this transformation looks. It'll look a little bit ugly, but at least theoretically, hopefully, the steps are clear. Okay, what you have to do is reasonably clear, right? So you know what the transformation of random variable will be. You know how to do convolution. You know how to do how to do this computation for the sign. And then you can put both these two together to get the PDF of u v. That also you have to do, right? One more step you have to do. Given the magnitude and the sign, you have to play around with it carefully and get the final total PDF. Once you get that, you know the PDF of v l. Okay. So going from v l to u u l plus one is quite easy. It's not very difficult. Okay. The reason is the for a degree d check, degree d bit node, it's only summation. All you have to do is only convolution. Okay, but anyway, we are not done here. This is not the only thing, right? You yeah, you should average this over all the row row e's. Okay, so let's do that also. So if you do that, the PDF of V L, okay, will be obtained. Okay, I'm going to say equality, but remember, this is all. This one needs to be careful when I say these things. But anyway, I'll say. Finally, if you put everything together, summation over E, row E, capital F, okay, convolution, E minus 1, what? Capital F of F, U, L. Okay? Given F, U, L, I can find F, V, L using this fancy formula. Okay? Very implicit formula which assumes you know. <laughs> You're doing a lot of hard work with this capital F. Once you do that capital F, everything else will nicely follow. Okay? So I'll denote this whole thing as rho. Okay? So whatever happens when you go from check note to bit note is this fancy function rho. You know, I mean, there's a lot of abuse of terminology here. You should know that when I put the argument of rho as a function, then I'm doing this complicated transformation with PDFs. Okay. Otherwise, what did I think of rho as? Rho of x was my simple distribution polynomial, right? Rho of x is summation rho. E, okay. So it's just a, just a simplification. Okay. So that's how the density update through the check node happens. Okay. So now, if I look at what happens 
in the L plus 1th iteration from bit node to check mode. Let me again look at a degree D bit node. Okay, what happens here is very very easy, right? What is happening? UL UL plus 1 is going to be equal to what? Yi plus what? V1 L plus V2 L plus so on till V D minus 1 L. Okay, and what are these VIs? They are all IID distributed according to FBL. Okay, that assumption again holds, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know, I mean, but I'm going to say capital F actually denotes the whole thing. You are taking care to bring in the sign also later. You have to do that also. You're right. Her point is, when you do this transformation, only the magnitude is taken care of. Okay, then you have to take care of the sign. You factor that in, and I'm calling that whole thing as capital F. So maybe, maybe you want to call this say F1 or something if you want. Okay, just using F. Okay, so you have to do that adjustment for the sign. Okay, you have to do the magnitude differently, and then sign differently, and then put both together, right? So there'll be this 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 F1 will be slightly different. Okay, maybe we'll keep it so this F1 takes care of sign also. Okay, if you want to be very rigorous about it, you can do that. Okay. Okay, so maybe I'll do I'll do F1 here. Huh? Here, yeah, it's it's fine. Equality is fine. There's no problem. If you're happy with such equalities, then it's fine. Yes. Okay, so for here it's very easy, right? So how will I do F U L plus one? Right? I have to take F Y I, which I know is simply normal distribution, convolve it with something which is actually convolution of F V L D minus one times. I do that, I get this. Okay, so convolution. Again, see when I write down this function, when you implement it numerically, you can't you can't do continuous uh, variable. So what will you do? You'll sample it. Okay, so it'll actually be a discrete time convolution. Okay, and you can nicely do it, and you make sure you choose only two power n type samples, and then you can do f of t very easily. It'll work very fast. Okay, it'll be much faster than just uh, painful convolution. So one can implement these things very easily. Okay, so you sample it at the right points. You get the answer. Okay. No, 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 no. I should be careful here. Let me be careful here. I need averaging over D, right? So I forgot about the averaging over D. So let me write that down a little bit carefully here. I'm sorry. Okay. So I need to sum over D, lambda D, to get my proper average. So that would be F U L plus one. Sorry. Okay, so this is after averaging. So these two are after averaging. And you notice this FYA convolution occurs in each term. So you can pull that out if you want. Okay. So if once you pull it out, you will get FYI convolved with convolved with something. Okay, so that's something I'll call lambda FVL. So these two are uh, nice, uh, nice ways of describing how this works. Okay. Okay. So these are just expressions. Anybody can write down these expressions. The difficulty is, can you actually get it implemented? Okay, so the only way you learn density evolution is not by listening to me write down these expressions and explaining about them. What's the only way you learn density evolution? Implement it and MATLAB. You have to code it. Okay, unless you code it, unless you understand all the intricacies, this will never get through. Okay, you'll never really understand how this is working out. Okay, so what about probability of error? Okay, so well and well and good. I'm, I'm tracking this PDF of U. Okay, so I can find F U, I can find F U L plus one, so on. What's my probability of error? 
yeah so integral from minus infinity to 0 f u l you will that will that will be your probability of error okay every time you can do it either, either that or in fact you can even do some more complicated things if you want but that's a good enough measure for probability of error okay so that will be uh, fine enough okay is that clear I'm sorry yeah yeah i'm going to come to that <coughs> okay so if you want finally at the end of the whole, end of everything i can write density evolution as what how can i write density evolution if you l plus 1 l plus 1 is some function i'll call it de okay so density evolution there have been too many f's so i'll call it de and it's parameterized by lambda rho and lambda and rho right and what's my input to this density evolution process Fy, right? You remember Fy and Fy is parameterized by just one parameter, which is sigma, right? Sigma or sigma square. Well, sigma square would be very correct, right? So it's all. So the way, the proper way of writing it down, I'll say Fy. Uh, Fy is actually normal with mean 2 by sigma square and variance 4 by sigma square. Okay. So the input actually is only sigma, right? Given sigma lambda and rho you can run density evolution and figure out probability of error at well i should be careful about fuel i'm sorry sorry fuel okay so i can run this any way i want <coughs> right so what's probability of error After iteration L, okay, so in iteration L, uh, probability of error will be probability that U L is less than zero. Okay, so this all this works because I assume the all zero code word, right? If I did not assume all zero code word, probability of error even is not very not very easy to define. Okay, so you can compute it by doing this minus need to zero. If you will, okay, some D whatever. Okay, so now you again make the argument about what can happen to this probability of error. Okay, so probability of error in iteration L, I'm sorry. Okay, so as you increase L, if you start with a particular sigma and lambda and rho, as you increase L, what can happen to probability of error? Again, it's a bounded uh, function and it and it and is hopefully monotonically decreasing. Okay, so it has to converge. Only question is, will it converge to zero or to a non-zero value. Okay, again you can define the threshold sigma star as what? Yeah, the supremum over supremum over sigma such that what? Probability of error will converges to zero. Okay, there'll be a maximum sigma at which probability of error will tend to 0 that is my threshold okay so again you have to prove several properties you have to prove monotonicity for this density evolution with respect to sigma all those things can be proven okay so i have not proved all of, the, all of the analytical properties but once you prove all those things one can nicely define sigma star as the threshold okay so so i showed you simulations for the binary symmetric channel with gallagher a okay so you write down you do the simulations for even soft decision decoding you'll see even though for calculating the threshold you tend so many things to infinity you tend block length to infinity you tend l to infinity but threshold is a very very reasonable measure for reasonable reasonably high block lengths even when you go to block length of 1000 with the 3 6 circular code the behavior will be very very close to threshold okay so you'll see that waterfall behavior close to threshold in your simulations okay so all those things will be true so the threshold is a very very important parameter okay in fact as you will see since i have tended since i have tended uh, what's happening i was told if i do this it will come back again but it's not going to come back ok 
Okay, maybe I should do something. Apparently, I can also do this. Well, okay. Anyway, we'll give up on that. So, so you'll see, sigma star is a function of function of what? Lambda and rho. Okay. So once you fix lambda and rho, you'll have a particular sigma star. Okay, and then you can do the same optimization once again over all possible uh, lambda and rho with a particular rate. You find that lambda and rho which has the maximum sigma star, okay, which can which has a threshold to be maximum value possible. Or you can do the reverse optimization, which is for a for a particular threshold, what's the maximum rate that is possible? Okay, so all these optimizations one can do to optimize over lambda and rho. Okay, then the comparison will be how, how close will the threshold be to the capacity of B, BPSK over WGM, which can also be uh, looked at. Okay, so again, I mean, these things are easy to write down, and when you read them, they'll all make sense, and uh, they'll be very wonderful to listen listen to and all that. But only way this will sink in is if you try to implement. It. Okay, and it's not too hard. You can do this in MATLAB without uh, too many uh, complexity so one can one can uh, implement this okay so the next thing I want to do is I uh, want to show you what do I want to show you I want to show you first let me show you an illustration of density evolution I'm going to try to open up MATLAB but uh, will that do something nasty to my thing or one never knows okay so if it becomes too painful I'll close the recording but in case it doesn't, let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so how can I run programs and all that? I can't type easily, you know. It's gonna be a pain. And then do that, huh? So will you do this? Open. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so you can see, I mean, there's lots of uh, MATLAB. If I don't know if you're not familiar with MATLAB, this may not make too much sense to you. And this is in fact a badly written program, so don't don't think you have to write density evolution properly. So basically, I'm doing it for a regular code with uh, left degree three and right degree twenty-seven. So what's the rate? Left degree three and right degree twenty-seven. So what's the rate? 8 by 9. 8 by 9 is the answer. So I'm doing it for, uh, so you see there are some FFT length and all that. I'm doing it in a very badly calculated way. So you'll see there are a lot of plots. So what I'm plotting is, um, I'm doing something called output. Basically PV is the, PV, this PV that you see here is the, uh, is the yeah, so it says, title says the bit to check. So V is bit to check. Okay, so I've done the opposite here, <laughs> sorry, I think I did u for the bit to check in the notation. And again, I'm also plotting the check to bit uh, f. So pv is the pdf of the bit to check message, du is the pdf of the bit, to check bit message. p out is actually for the output, I'm also doing that, it's not too crucial. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to run this, my sigma is 0.4, okay, channel noise variance is 0.4, okay, so which is quite low. So let's run this. What should I do? Okay. Okay. There you go. So we got one plot, which is, can you see the plot? So it says output, output is like basically, and don't worry about what output is. It's basically some PDF, the overall PDF at iteration 0 and the bit error rate is 0 0.00621. Now I have to press enter or something on the main window. How should I do that? We'll go to the next one. No, it didn't go. How do I press enter here? 
it's paused i have to press any key so i don't know how to press any key <laughs> double click is not working so i think i should do i should do this no space okay But then yeah it's gone good i got it so let me move this here so that i can can you see it okay so this is the pdf of the bit to check message in iteration 0 you see it's the same as the previous plot right it's the basically this is what this is a gaussian with mean 2 by sigma square what is 2 by sigma square if sigma is 0.4 Yeah, so you see the mean is around 12 point something, which is correct. Okay, so I've not made any mistake. If you want, you can check with the variance also. So that's the that's basically the input uh, PDF. Okay, so I'm going to press enter. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I know what I have to do. I have to run something else now. How do I run something else? Or how do I load? A, how do I run something else? Again, open. But this will need some input. How do I give inputs? Keyboard. Keyboard. No, it won't work. So, so if I run this, what will happen? Oh, oh, oh. I'll do this, huh? Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Maybe what will happen if I run this? Okay, so I have to put the. Okay, so let me try this. Okay, maybe I'll try this. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no. This won't work. This won't work. This won't work. You know what I can do? I can do one more thing. Let me try this. I think if this works, it will be much simpler. Let's do a paste. Beautiful. Now I do enter. What do I do? Enter. Enter. There was some enter here. Wow. That's very nice. So, but that doesn't mean this will work, no? Okay, so I have to just cut and paste from here. Oops. The major experiment in. How do I do close brackets? Semicolon. Okay, this is wonderful. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So opening it where? Yeah, that will be better, no? Why am I wasting so much time doing this? It's nice to see this happen, but looks like uh, I can't see my mouse. Okay, there it is. Oh, it's busy. We should stop the recorder. Stop the recorder, huh? Yes. Okay, let me stop the recorder.